Warning, this is part of Anime Month. But don't worry, no audio, video, pieces of any anime reviewed or reflected on in this month will be used in the makings of these videos over the next 30 or so days, as they belong to their respective countries and or companies of animation studios. And out of all great respect, to watch all these great animes, we suggest here at Code Equestria that you find legal means, such as Hulu, Netflix, or Crunchyroll, to experience these animes that are going to be reviewed or speculated on. Thank you very much. Rate, comment, favorite, subscribe for more of Anime Month. And yes, this video is being shot at exactly 10 o'clock at night. As of the time of this recording on the East Coast, it is August 1st. Now, it is only 10 o'clock on July 31st here where I live. But, tomorrow marks this very special day in my life especially. August 1st is, to me at least, Digimon Day. Now, why do I call August 1st Digimon Day? Well, it's because of the long-standing history of the Digimon mythos. In the original Digimon adventure, it's discovered in episode 23, Home Away From Home, spoilers, that the Digidestin first arrived in the digital world on August 1st. So, I use that day to universally celebrate the anime in, in which quite frankly, got me into the genre. Sailor Moon might have opened the door, but Digimon certainly kicked the door down. I was thinking of doing a review of the, fir of the first three seasons of Digimon, but considering that I would have to re-watch them, and seeing that I know them by nauseam, a review would not suffice. Instead, I just wanted to give my reflections on what the Digimon series, all six of them, have meant for me, for me as a fan. See, Digimon is more than just a normal anime in my life. It's more than just an anime I watched while I was going through a junior, senior year in high school. You see, Digimon single-handedly saved my life. You see, when I was about 15, 16, I had my first girlfriend, and no, unlike most channels, she won't rename, remain nameless here, Samantha Nowen. She and I were big Sailor Moon fans, so much so that we wrote a script together of a Sailor Moon movie that, oddly enough, became part of my real-life high school transcript back here where I live. But, let's just say I made some stupid mistakes and we had a falling out. I took it real hard. Very hard. I delved straight into depression and thoughts of suicide. Yep, that's right, me, Nirvana Sparkle, suicidal, and on the brink of losing his mind. Losing grabs of even hobbies that I once adored, I looked for anything to a way out. And then, seemingly, Digimon came along. Yes, I was a mid-season convert, and the less I thought of Pokemon, the better, seeing that my ex-girlfriend was also a Pokemon fan at the time as well. I started watching Digimon as purely escapist television to get me out of my depressive mode for day-to-day. -day. 
but instead what I found was an unusual camaraderie to a TV show. It's teachings of teamwork, friendship, believing in something bigger than yourself, being confident and courageous enough to face the dangers of life no matter how they lay ahead of you, and to have enough confidence and love in other people and others and yourself to move on as as well as being a reliable, knowledgeable, and generous person permeated. Plus, seeing that I grew up in a kind of religious family, the religious undertones tones of the series also made an impact on me. Digimon Adventure was very important. It helped me pull out of my depression, depression and get back to the normalcy of high school, in which I ultimately passed with a 3.58 GPA in my senior year. Digimon became such a vital part of my life life that I even started wearing goggles, literally, on my head every day to school. You see, the goggles represent in the Digimon universe the sign of leadership. It's often associated with the quote-unquote leader character of the Digimon franchises, from Tai Kamiya to Davis Montamiya to Takato Matsuki. Ultimately passed down to Tukuya Konbara, Bara and Bara, and now Digimon Fusion's main hero and hero and protagonist, Mikey Kudo. The goggles represent to me, however, more than leadership. They offer up to me, at least, the opportunity to look at things more brightly than most, to have a bright, optimistic future, to always keep looking up and point yourself in the right direction, not only to lead yourself to better tomorrows, but to lead other people as well, to be a motivating factor to change lives. Digimon was such an important part of my my motivating factors that I even started writing scripts again. I haven't done it in a long time, time since, but yes, I started writing again. What you would consider a fan fiction. You might have heard of the name if you paid attention to this channel. The name is Digimon Extreme Monsters. Now, granted, yes, this goes right in that canon fin fan fiction territory, but that's how much it motivated me. To try to re envision the Digimon universe as I saw fit, seeing that I'd watched every episode and played every video game that couldn't be nailed down, hell knows I own the first two Digimon worlds, and still a game that I own to this day, Digimon Digital Card Battle, as well as Rumble Arena. Digimon's characters and motives of true teamwork and camaraderie, almost a brotherhood, and Loyalty and devotion have oddly enough bled back, back into my love of My Little Pony. I guess you could say I was destined to be a fan of that too. But for all for all that Digimon has done for me, it certainly holds up as a much stronger Mon show in terms of motivations characters, memorable moments, and overall story arcs, as Pokemon has become come blasphemy based to its early years. Years, Digimon has stayed somewhat consistent. Yes, there were those couple of seasons like Digimon Frontier 
in Digimon Data Squad, but I'll excuse Data Squad. Waste got back to the team formula, had a proper Agumon, and had a proper two world saving structure. Unlike Frontier that threw the whole Digivolution chain for a loop. Quite frankly, even though Frontier is the story of the original Digi Destiny team that's made reference at the end of season one, the execution of this season is absolutely deplorable. Thankfully, Digimon Fusion Season 6 and its upcoming sequel season, Cross Wars, are back to the Digimon basics. Sure, there isn't as much Digi Destin, gone are the days of 7 and 8 teams, to be replaced with, with at least only 3, 4, or 5 characters, but the general thought is the same. A team destined to save the world, whether hook or crook, starting out as perfectly imbalanced strangers, learning to get along with each other, and ultimately learning learning each other's traits, quirks, and even, near the end, becoming like a family, something that I seriously needed back when I was 15. Cause heck knows, I didn't trust in mine, either. And that's the biggest part of what's made Digimon such appealing to me as a fan. It's family dynamic. The characters are almost as close as brothers and sisters at times. Getting into arguments, sharing relationships... And yes, there were relationships in Digimon, although applied, but still, it was there. The loving, courteous, and courteous nature of Sora always looking out for the team, or the blunt, but kind honesty of Mimi, or even the less kind bluntness of Yo Lee, mixed with the brain... Brains and brawn of matter, matter is he. Every member of the Digidestin had a role to play. They were important. Unlike the other big anime of the day, Dragon Ball Z, where every character, character was relegated to a sub-role. Every member of the Digidestin had his moment to shine and... Boy, howdy, did they. And we all had our favorites. Favorites, no matter if you were a Digivice-carrying member like I was. Literally, I brought my D3 Digivice and D-Terminal to school. And everybody was kind of okay with it. Even the teachers. Even the rest of the students that were around me in my drama class found the fact that I had my D-Terminal with me at all times like a true Digi-Destined, may think kind of cool and abstract at the same time. Heck, even Izzy was my childhood school nickname, so much so that when I joined the school news back in my sophomore year, I actually went by the name of Izzy as my call name. This really showed... This really shows how much Digimon has made an impact on me in my entire life. For me even to do the two reviews that are currently up on this channel of those seasons were not very difficult, but they were very heart-wrenching. Really, I should have done this video in its place. More of a loving respect. A love letter to Toei Animation, to even the English voice actors like Laura Jill Miller and Joshua Smith, who impacted my life through their characters. If it weren't for Digimon, my love and appreciation of Code Lyoko, or even My Little Pony Further would not be possible. I am a Digidescent first. Born and bred. And that's why even my OC, 
My other identity, Nirvana Sparkle, carries with him goggles. The symbolize the impact. Sure, you might have been a Pokemon fan, or a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, or even a DVZ fan, and that's all well and good. Trust me, we're gonna get to one of those big three before all this month is done. But for me, I was the abstract one. I was the Digimon fan. Granted, a series based off of a bunch of Giga Pets that ultimately failed not once, not twice, you would think would not have so, so much of an emotional and cultural impact. But at least for this one, Digidestin, it most certainly did. And quite frankly, I hope now that it's back in the proper hands of the Saban franchise and even a new Digimon video game has been announced for the Xbox 360, something that I can't wait to honestly play. I haven't played a Digimon game in so long. It almost feels like my childhood and the great times of my life are finally being returned to me piece by piece. It's just too bad. I don't have my Digivice. I don't have my D-Terminal. I wish I did. Those things were truly special. Just like this show. So, if you're listening, or if you even care, just think. On this August 1st, don't think of me. Think of the show I love. Think of how important that day means to all those people that truly loved Digimon, that which were truly passionate. Digimon can be popular again. Heck, it has its chance now. Hopefully, one day in the new series, they'll make reference to August 1st being special in its own little universe. But for me, no matter if no matter if the fiction brings it up or not, no no matter if it's ever referenced again, I will never forget the scene in which Ty looks at the calendar and notices the day. It's quite frankly a day, even though in a world of fiction, I will never forget in my reality. Thank you, Digimon. Thank you for making me a better anime fan, but ultimately, a better person as well. Let Anime Month officially begin.